Hi there, everybody, and welcome to this week's Comics from the Future. I'm Jason. I'm Andy. And we're with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. So for those of you in the U.S., our show gets watched, you know, the world over, I like to think. Uh, I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving yesterday. I hope you're munching some leftovers as you watch this. <laughs> and uh, the reason that Meg is not with us, it is Black Friday today, so we've had a very busy day at the store. She's out there dealing with all of our live customers while we shoot this show. Mm. Uh, so first up, I'd like to say that this is a very small week for comics. So if you're looking for some relief to your wallet, <laughs> it is finally here. In fact, Marvel, the Marvel comics are coming out around Christmas. They went ahead and solicited those last week. So there is no Marvel on the show today yeah. at all. So you're not missing anything if you notice there's no Marvel. There is still some DC, some, some cool indie books, but this show is about, I'd say, like 50% smaller than yeah. usual. Yeah. So we're just going to launch right into it. Going to get through this. Uh, we, we do have a couple real cool ones to, to show. So starting off. Stray Dogs and Dog Days. This is probably, if not definitely, the biggest one of the week. Um, so Stray Dogs was such a big hit, uh, sleeper hit, that I will always uh, say that I told you so with it. <laughs> I read the issue number one of Stray Dogs, and I was like, this, there's something really unique about this. Just the mix of really like real horror mixed with this all dogs go to heaven style artwork. Um, starring these dogs and kind of a murder mystery. I knew this would be a big hit. It turned out it was. Yeah. It was a big deal. A lot of people scrambling to try to find that number one after the fact because I don't think it was heavily, heavily ordered like, uh, you know, a uh, Spawn, uh, King Spawn or anything like that. I mean, yeah. This was one of your classic. Um, it took about till issue three for people to look back on it. Those, those horror poster homage covers yes. sort of sealed the deal where everyone was just chasing down them and everything to do with it. Yeah, so it was such a success. They are doing this follow-up. Now, this uh, the original Stray Dogs was, what, I think six issues long? Correct. This one is only two issues. Um, I'm still guessing we haven't heard the last from Stray Dogs, but this is a... Um, not really an anthology, but it's two issues long, and it's going to spotlight a lot of the other stray dogs and the stories with them. Initially, when I heard about this, I thought it would be, oh, there's going to be a new mystery or a new murder or a new something. But this actually said it's going to reveal more about what happened in the previous one, mm -hmm. um, spotlighting you know, the, the other dogs that were in the house during that story. It says questions will be answered, mysteries will be solved. So it sounds like just a cool follow-up, more of like a uh, Stray Dogs, uh, you know, 2.0. And then I am guessing we are going to get a official like Stray Dogs follow-up after this, um, especially this only being two issues. Much like the dogs and Stray Dogs, us comic readers are salivating <laughs> for more. And so I bet as they're working on the full yeah. new six-issue run. They were like, let's let's go ahead and work more with the story we have established, do a little two-issue right, thing. Right, yeah. So, this is one, like the previous one, you don't want to miss because uh, I'm guessing this is going to sell out pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Anything Stray Dogs related, even the, you know, the Vampirella variant covers, the Red Sonia variant covers that had the dogs on it from mm -hmm. Stray Dogs hot sellers. So, you'll make sure that you put yourself down, you let your store know that you want... Stray Dogs Dog Days, because I'm guessing even stores ordering a ton of it, they're still going to sell out. Yeah, with it being a two-issue thing, sometimes it can confuse a store yeah. on exactly how much people are going to want that. And also, a lot of store owners think that heat on something's died once long mm -hmm. enough has passed, but I don't think on this one that No, is I think case. we're just getting started with, with the Stray Dogs universe. Yeah. So this is the A cover, and then... We get a return to the classic horror movie variants. I don't think they would ever not do this with this series. I think every issue is going to have one of these. So is that from... Is I that think a it's Creep, Creep Show. Show. I um, thought. Uh, Stephen King's Creep yeah. Show. Uh, I believe that is the, uh, the homage there. But once again, I'm imagining people want to get the A cover and B cover for this one because... Go and try to find those original ones now. They are not easy to get a hold of. 
All right, so our next one is called Cult of Icarus. It is a four-part mini-series from Scout Comics. Uh, this is original work. This isn't, you haven't missed anything before. <laughs> it is a brand new four-issue series. It follows this um, foster child who's kind of a wild child. She's gotten in trouble a lot. And finally, she decides to leave her foster home to find out about her history, who her parents were, where she came from. I'm assuming this is our character on the cover here. Mm -hmm. And what she discovers is her parents and her past have links to a vampire cult and this whole world of magic that run parallel to our own. Hmm. I, I like stuff like that. Yeah. And I know fiction can get inundated with that. I feel like after Harry Potter, I know this is a long time ago, yeah. got popular, it was sort of what other worlds are happening in mm -hmm. the background of our world. But when yeah. done right, that's one of my favorite things because yeah. we all want to believe our world has a little more magic to it mm -hmm. than uh, you know, you wake up, go to work, and, and read <laughs> comics, you know, which is the that's best part. That's magic enough. That is the best part. <laughs> so that is uh, g the general premise of Cult of Icarus, just character trying to find out her past and discovering the secret world behind our world. I kind of get it too with the cult of Icarus, like flying close to the sun that has to do with vampires. Interesting. You know, maybe they're vampire hunters or something. That Sounds is interesting. A, that is a very good point. So, and I see her shirt is, it reads still here and the T is sort of upside down. So mm -hmm. uh, kind of, kind of some evil yeah. in there. So uh, that's another new series from Scout that is available to order this week. And just the one cover. Wow. Next up is another new one. This is a one-shot, and this is Apocalypse 5000. But... <laughs> I missed the other 4,999 of these. Oh, well. I'll start. I'll start. This is a good jumping on point. Um, this is by, uh, the art is by Ken Langriff, and that's a big deal. That's kind of, uh, he's the artist of it. But this is kind of spearheaded with his name on it because he was a artist who actually got his his start with um, Stan Lee. I was reading the story about how he got his job, and he went to the Marvel offices with some of his art. Stan Lee was coming out of the building, and he went up to him and was like, "Hey, will you look at my portfolio?" And Stan Lee's like, "I'm actually heading to lunch, but uh, go upstairs to the offices and tell John Romita that Stan Lee sent you up there." And he said he got in right then. So this is a guy who, I mean, got his start from some of the biggest creators. He went on to um, work alongside, like, some of the great people. He also worked on DC with stuff like Witching Hour, Ghosts, Weird Tales, World's Finest, and Superman Family Adventures, or Superman Family. Um, and he is doing this new series he's doing the art for. Uh, about humans uh, serve great machines. It's like a post-apocalyptic, and rebels are hunted down and forced to build great computer pyramids. So it's kind of a post-apocalyptic horror sci-fi thing by this classic uh, comic book artist. So sounds interesting. I think it's going to be big if you are a big fan of some of his work and some of that kind of old school uh, kind of founders of the comic industry. And it, it looks to me like on the cover, somebody's getting punched in the face. Someone's getting punched in the face pretty, pretty hard. Yeah. So, uh, yep, just the one cover for this as well. Okay, so this show, since it's a small show, we don't really have our segments. We're just sort of launching through all the noteworthy things to order this week. So next up, we have Superman, Son of Kal-El, number six. Now, uh, issue number five sold like hotcakes. Very big deal. The first thing I'll say about this one is... We got to see an advanced copy of this, but this was only inked. It was black and white. Mm -hmm. There was no lettering. So it's really interesting when you're trying to figure out what's going on in a comic and there's no words, especially when there look like there's an important conversation in it. So what important conversation? Uh, Jonathan Kent has a conversation with Tim Drake. Now, something very important has happened in both their yeah. character lives lately. And it, le it led me to wonder, okay, wow, they're talking together. They've got to be addressing this. Mm -hmm. You know, some terms might come out. That's all I know. You know, it's not much of a spoiler because I don't know much more than all of you. <laughs> but there is definitely some scenes of Jonathan Kent and Tim Drake having some sort of conversation that was not on the page yet. Yes. So pretty important issue. If you picked up the number five, this is probably the one to get alongside with mm -hmm. it to, to learn more info. 
This is the uh, regular John Timms A cover. And then this is the Inhill Lee cardstock variant. Also available is Superman Son of Cal L number five second print showing Jonathan Kent and Jay Nakamura. This issue had the kiss that set eBay on fire. <laughs> uh, that's how I'm going to put it. But, man, <laughs> everybody was exactly looking right. for that issue after it came out. Next up, we have the Bermejo variant for Detective, Detective Comics 1046. Uh, it's hard when we get to these giant numbers. Yeah. Uh, and this is the Fear State Aftermath. And it's kind of a big deal because this is definitely, with the stuff going on in Batman, we know that Batman is going to be leaving Gotham. He feels like he is no longer um, the protector that he's supposed to be. And this is the night before he leaves. Mm. And kind of what he does to prepare Gotham for him not being there and, you know, does he meet with some of his family? You know, it's going to be very interesting to see how he leaves this chapter of his life. I don't think anyone thinks he's gone forever, but this is going to be a pretty significant storyline in all the Bat books. And this one seems like a pretty big one. So uh, this is the Mermejo variant. This also has the backup story uh, called Foundations. It's the conclusion to that story where they're deciding is... Uh, Arkham Tower necessary and a good idea for Gotham to be the replacement of Arkham Asylum and we're getting our kind of final little bit with that in this issue so yeah that lead up's important because that Arkham Tower plotline that's going to be a 12 part yep. thing so that's they're making a very big deal of mm -hmm. that um, and I, I have to say if if Batman went the way I wanted it to go, he would be like, you know what, I need to leave Gotham. And what would happen is Gotham would just fall into chaos. Yeah. And they would call Batman and be like, please come back. Like somebody <laughs> would reach out. You know, he always feels like, should I be doing this? But from what I read, Gotham needs Batman. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. So next up we have Action Comics, another big number, number 1038. This is the Tedesco variant. This is going to be part three of the war world series yeah. that's going on with superman so if you're enjoying that here is the tedesco variant we like to show the variants because we we feel like the the regular covers make their way out yeah so we really like to kind of show off the here's the other one you might you know you're already on the regular cover but you might want the variant that's mm -hmm. why we do it this way this is very reminiscent of some of the future state covers we got <laughs> for sure with gladiator superman and his armor and everything so at least for the Superman title, it looks like it's pretty close yeah. to the future state version um, of the way events are unfolding. I'll be interested to see, because uh, in the future state uh, Superman World War, we, we got some of Superman on there, but it was actually more focused on people on Earth talking about where did Superman go. Right. And I'm interested to see, are we going to be seeing that? Are we going to be seeing more of his fights and everything? It'll be, it'll be cool to see. Next up we have Aquaman Green Arrow Deep Target number three. This is number three of the 12-part series. This is the John Boy Myers variant cover. Really cool. And uh, not a whole lot of information on this issue. If you know the story so far, it seems like... Uh, Arthur Curry and Oliver Queen have found themselves in a world where their roles are switched <coughs> and they're trying to figure out what happened. And in this one, they are captured by Scorpio and must find a way to escape from, it says, the last place they expect to be. And I can think of a lot of places I would not expect to be. I'm guessing it'll be a, maybe a little bit more uh, normal than like on the moon or something, but... We'll have to see. It's been a really good series so far. I'm interested to see where it's going. So this is number three and the John Boy Myers variant. Green Arrow, he's spamming that fire button the way I do in <laughs> video games. Like, if you give me unlimited ammo in a video game, I'm constantly firing. <laughs> Same as Green Arrow on this cover. All right, so this is DC vs. Vampires number three, the Matina variant. That is terrifying. That's very scary. That, yeah, so... Um, if you've been enjoying the series, here's a Matina variant in this issue. The solicitation is claiming another hero will fall. 
as the war against the vampires for Earth heats up. And, you know, this is a 12-issue series, so I think it's going to be very eventful. I like these what-if series because they can do that. They can yeah. kill whoever they want. That's what makes it really interesting to, to really see what happens um, when, you know, when it hits the fan. Yeah, we've already seen some pretty major deaths in this so far. Uh, one of them, uh, you know, how Jordan claimed to be probably, if he was turned into a vampire, the most dangerous vampire there would be. Um, and the the chaos goes from there as, you know, Justice League members and, and villains are alike are getting turned into vampires. Yep. Next up we have Deathstroke Inc. number four. This is the Ivan Tau variant. And in this one, Deathstroke and Canary are at odds with what to do now that they know the truth about the organization they've been working for called Trust. Um, we saw in this last issue that just came out this last Tuesday. Uh, I was very excited about this issue, and I think people should really keep an eye on this series as it unfolds to be a even grander um, part of the DC Universe, kind of more than what we originally thought. I even read an article today about them talking about the surprise reveal from this uh, past sure. week's issue and what the character that we see in it, where we saw them last, and what their what they mean now that they're in this. So this is a big one. I think people should definitely be checking out this series. For one, it's really fun, but also it's kind of the uh, the biggest continuity-heavy DC series right now. All right, so this is the A cover. This is the Rossimo regular cover for Harley Quinn number 10. In this issue, it says that her, her pal Kevin, who she's had around <laughs> since the beginning of this series and has become her friend and, and helper, he has a new muse that he will be going on a date with. Hmm. So, yeah, sort of a, a rom-com issue, <laughs> if you will. And here is the Derek Chu variant. They, we just can't get enough Derek Chu doing yeah. hardly on these covers. They're, they're all really, really good. Next up, we have Robin number nine. So uh, this is actually what sounds like the last part of the Lazarus story arc. The, uh, the Lazarus competition that's been going on, you know, who's going to make it out on top. And in this one, uh, Damien must face off against a literal giant demon on Lazarus Island. And uh, we have this variant cover here. This is the Francis Manipal variant with double XL, I guess is how his you say his name. I, I think it's just XXL. Okay, it's just XXL. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this... Uh, I like how they've been spotlighting all the new characters that have been in this series. So yeah, XXL's first appearance was in this very series, Robin issue number two, mm. just in case anyone's wondering. And last issue was hugely eventful. You got the end of the tournament. You find out everything that's going on at the island, what's up with Mother Soul, uh, what happens when you win the tournament. Uh, if you haven't read it yet, very cool, very eventful issue. So this is the cover to Superman 78, number 5. This is the Jamal Campbell variant on that. And in this, Superman is trying to escape the bottle city of Kandor. Because meanwhile, Brainiac is, you know, big surprise, attacking Metropolis. Yeah, so like he likes to do. That is what's going on. And this is the Tedesco variant. Next up, this is... Task Force Z number three. It's a hard one to say. Uh, this is the Rodolfo variant. And in this, uh, if you read the last issue, there is a new uh, potential team member. And it says in this one that um, it seems like a lot of these characters that they are resurrecting from the dead aren't necessary they weren't necessarily team players to begin with why would they be expected to play nice now that they're dead on a team and uh i think it's not a spoiler to say because it's on the a cover that it's uh that it's deadshot and deadshot he's not too happy about being brought back to life so this is the variant for task force z number three okay so this is teen titans academy number 10 this is the Osseo cardstock variant, and in this issue, we're going to learn a lot about the past of Dane, who is also 
called Nevermore, one of the more mysterious characters of the Teen Titans Academy. So here's a variant for issue number 10. Next up we have Star Wars Adventures number 13. This is the A cover, the Frank Avia cover. And once again, we just learned this past week that um, Dark Horse is going to be doing a lot of the ancillary Star Wars projects. It's going to be phasing out of IDW and heading to Dark Horse. So I can't imagine there's too many issues of this series left. But it sounds like they're going out on some really good ones of this one. Ray, Finn, and BB-8 after they get the Falcon from Jakku. Uh, it's been sitting a while and they have to make a pit stop to get some repairs. And through some turn of events, they are now being pursues, pursued by a bounty hunter. So anytime you bring a bounty hunter to something, it gets really exciting. Who's it going to be? Probably whoever that shadow is. So this is the A cover for that. And then the B cover, which is really nice. Yeah, look at that. Um, this is the D. Armini variant. And this is for the, kind of reflects the B story in this issue where Vader is hunting down an ancient tome and will stop at nothing to get it. And this is a really, really nice variant cover. Yeah, all, you see all the people behind Vader, but all you got to really worry about is Vader. You know, he <laughs> yeah, he tells all his men, he's like, just have my back. I was about to say, by the time, like, if he's coming at you, you're not going to get to those stormtroopers. No. You're, you're done. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now we're going to launch into some more indie titles. This is the carry variant for Eat the Rich number five, the final issue mm. of this series. So if you've been enjoying it, here's a chance to possibly order the variant for the final issue. Next up, I love this cover. Yeah. It's a little hard to see because, of course, Echo Lands is uh, landscape. landscape instead of portrait mode. Um, this is, for Echo Lands number five, this is the Foss variant. It's just so cool. You really see a representation of how the book is such a, um, a collage of different art styles and everything. So you've got this, like, very... Uh, anime based mech suit on the front mixed with this painterly style so definitely don't want to miss out on this variant cover for Echo Lens number 5 yeah, the head there and the colors give me a Voltron yeah. feeling yeah. okay so this is issue number 2 for Girl Scout Stone Ghost issue number 1 just came out this week this is the newest Girl Scout series by Jim Mafood. so if you love his style of art and you like what he's up to here's a chance to Tell your store, hey, I like that issue one. Sign me up, or maybe you missed issue one. So now you know that that is out, and this is issue number two. Next up, Gunslinger Spawn. This is number three. We just got number two uh, this week where we learned, uh, uh, we saw Gunslinger Spawn learn how toilets work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the big crux I took away from that issue. But this one actually sounds like what I kind of expected that, you know, the first two were really set up issues about bringing Gunslinger Spawn into the current kind of Spawn continuity. This one, it says, and it's funny, like, they know how to write solicitations for Gunslinger Spawn and Spawn books in general. Because it, it says, Gunslinger Spawn comes face to face with a new villain from his Old West past. And in, new villain was all in caps. Like... Hey, if you're just skimming through this, let's say new words. villain catches your eye. So there's going to be a new villain in this Gunslinger spawn. I'm guessing that it's actually, you know, not one that we've seen before, but That's he's going to remember like. some history. Yeah, some history because yeah. he actually hasn't really been in a ton of stuff. We haven't seen a ton of his no. backstory and everything. So this is going to be a big one with a new villain brought into the spawn universe. And there's also a Brett Booth variant but it is not uh, available yet to see. Yep, so no cover on the booth, but that's still important. So yeah. those of you who want all the variants, tell your store, hey, give me that booth variant. Because when we don't have covers as retailers, we don't order a lot of them. It's funny, our Spawn books, Spawn, King Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn, and soon to be The Scorched, right. um, I think that and Walking Dead are the books we have the most people on saying, I want every variant yep. for it. I don't know what it is about Image or, or being a Spawn title or whatever, but I think it's really cool, and it goes to show how nice the variants they make for this. They're still cover price, so 
some yeah. people like McFarland. I mean, you know, keep watching this show. We'll see how much more he comes up. Who knows? Probably none. So ne <laughs> next up we have, this is the Haberland variant for Hell Cop number three. It's funny, they've been doing a couple of these now. Yeah, I, I like when they do the magazine uh -huh. sort of look to them. And they got this one just right. So if you're enjoying Hell Cop number three, I think they're doing some really good variant covers. This is the Haberland variant. However, there's two more variants I think that we might need to talk about. Here is the C variant, which is by Portacio and Todd McFarland. Wow. <laughs> That's right. We're right back to him already. So, yeah, this is Portacio and McFarlane doing Hellcop number three, the C cover variant. So, if you're one of those many people we just discussed who likes all the McFarlane, I would definitely order this one. Man, that was so people are much. Be missing this. Like, was that an old cover they're reusing or something? Because it looks so reminiscent of like. That time frame, that classic Portacio, yeah. McFarlane era image book. I love that. Yeah, it, it really does. I I don't recognize it. I think no. it is new. I just think they're, you know, they're they're tapping into that old I friendship they've had. They, they're channeling like their twenty year old selves to yeah. create this. And if that's not enough, there's a D cover, the sketch one, where you can see what they did with just inked up, get all the color out, really get to see that. So I mean, I think they're. Pretty proud of this that they're having two yeah. covers you can order. So, again, if you like the McFarlane, there it is, Hellcop number three. Probably a lot of people are going to miss on this one just because they're not keeping track with, you know, Hellcop variants. Yeah. So, well, you know, they had Spawn on the early one. <laughs> yeah. And that's when I knew, okay, let's keep mm -hmm. a watch on this title. Next up is Ice Cream Man. Uh, can you believe it's already up to issue 27? 27? Oh, 27. I, I was one behind. I was about to say 26. But 27. I was in the ballpark. I mean, this is now a long-running independent book. You know, not often do they, yeah. they hit those numbers. And uh, this is the Benjamin variant. That is a creepy variant because... If you look down in the water, I see eyes. Yeah. And so all that is hair. Ice cream hair. Yeah, with the, with the, the skull <laughs> toppings. Yeah. Yeah, and the A cover for this is really creepy, too. People should go check it out. It has a cockroach man on it. Okay, so next up, this is Radiant Black number 11, the Greco variant. So this past week, we had issue number 10 come out, which had the special 999 edition that was all black light ink, and not just the cover, the interiors. Mm -hmm. And we had a, a very uh, a very cool uh, person who shops here. Uh, hi, Scott, if you're watching. <laughs> he came in, and you know we saw ours, but I didn't have a black light yeah. handy. Well, he read his under just black light, and he was just going on and on about how great it looked. He said that if they did every issue from here on out in black light, he would gladly pay ten dollars <laughs> an issue. So if any of you missed that number 10 blacklight issue, go 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 look for it. Mm -hmm. So it's supposed to be very cool. But yeah, so this is the Greco variant, the Radiant Black number 11. Soon they're doing a crossover with Radiant Black in a new series. Mm -hmm. This comic just has a lot going for it. Next up, this is Joy Operations number 2. So this is our A cover for that. Um, and you read Joy Operations this last week, the new Bendis book from Dark Horse. Yeah, I recommend it. I really do. So, you know, you got a new Brian Michael Bendis character. Mm -hmm. He's moved Jinx World to Dark Horse, and he's launching some new things. This is going to be a six-part series. I thought the first issue was really good. It has a great twist a third of the way through. You know, that really hooked me. Uh, they're, they're building a very interesting world. It is our world set in the future. So I, that's the most I'll say. But new new Bendis series, new Bendis character. Uh, you know, don't, don't make it a Naomi situation where <laughs> just everyone's like, oh, Bendis, you know, he's all over the place. And now everyone's looking for that Naomi stuff. So, And then we have the Oming variant cover for it. Mm -hmm. Of course, him bringing in his good friend Michael Avon Oming to do this variant. Yeah, and I can't talk too much about the book yet because that issue one just came out yeah I can't, I can't spoil you know what the twist is okay so this is the cover to house of slaughter number three number two also just released last week and this is the regular cover the a cover by Sheehan and in this you so the story is being told in the present where 
Aaron is having to go after Jace, who's his old friend, but we're also getting snippets of their past. In fact, I think most of the story is about their history and their friendship. So in this, I think the past part is supposed to be that they sneak out of the House of Slaughter to go into, like, the forbidden areas of Chicago. So we're going to learn a little bit more about what, you know, I guess two members of the House of Slaughter do to, <laughs> to blow off some steam and have some fun that maybe they're not supposed to have. And so there's also the variant cover. This is the Deladera variant cover. Next up, we have Radio Apocalypse number two, another recent release. We had so many people coming in asking for this book. Yeah. That I, I think it just uh, hit all the right buttons for a lot of people. This post-apocalyptic kind of rock and roll music centric series. And this is the variant for number two, the, and I'm going to butcher the name, Radikishnin variant. I was hoping to hear you try to pronounce that. <laughs> well, you did, and I'm sure, I think I skipped over a couple of letters, but you'll know it when you see it. So Radio Apocalypse number one had a local comic shop day version. Mm -hmm. So an exclusive cover, you can only get local comic stores that just came out this past Wednesday, which was local comic shop day. Yes. So that's one you might also be on the lookout for. I don't know if we have any left or not. I, I doubt it. Yeah. A lot of people really into that. Yeah, it, it was a pretty cool first issue. It, you know, there's lots of post-apocalyptic series and a lot of them have music elements to it. Um, like, what's the furthest place from here? But this one really does have a radio station at the center of it. So, Okay, so uh, I know we don't bring them up much, but this is a Todd McFarlane homage variant on Barbarella number six. So this was announced just lately. Mm -hmm. Like, this wasn't something you could have read about a month ago. Dynamite has been sneaking in these covers, but we catch them before our show. So this is one we thought you'd want to know about for sure, all you McFarland fans, or you just like the Amazing Spider-Man 300 homage covers. So it is available to order. And in addition, here is Vengeance of Vampirella number 25. Also, the McFarland homage cover. So another one that they snuck in right at the deadline. Yeah. You know, because we have until... Monday to place our orders on these and I think they released these covers today. Wow. I didn't see them before today. So um, there you go. I mean that's what our show's about. We're going we're to pull together all the knowledge. What do you think we're going to see next? We saw the Ninja Turtles homage cover. It's the Spawn 300 homage cover. What are we going to get next? It's hard to say. I mean you know everyone likes Hulk 181 of course. Yeah. But I, I just I we got an know. indie, a Marvel, so maybe a DC, maybe a... Uh, I don't know, detective with him right. swinging or, you know, we'll have yeah, to see. May, may, I, I dare them to do homages on the, the jock detective comics. Oh, man, a with all the bats, with all the bats up. would be awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. You heard it here first. We <laughs> recommended that one. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, this is Chicken Devil number three. These have had such great covers. Just the bright, goofy. <laughs> Hiding in a ball pit with a gun. <laughs> That I mean, was every parent's fear from the <laughs> mid to late 90s. I mean, you expect to find some french fries in there, a chicken nugget. That one story about there were snakes in the ball pit. Oh. Yeah, just the urban legends of that. Anyways, just to let you know, um, if you are enjoying this series, to go ahead and let your store know to put it on your subscription list because this is when we're going to start ordering less and less of series and you don't want to miss out on an issue and have to scramble to try to find it somewhere else. So let your store know that you want Chicken Devil on your list, and this is number three. So we're going to do some uh, graphic novels and collections now. First up is Absolute Doomsday Clock. Absolutely. So I remember, was it last Christmas they were getting Doomsday Clock out? It was sort of like volume one with the first six, yeah. and volume two is the second six, because it wasn't quite like wrapped up or maybe it was the year before, but yeah. it was two sets and mm -hmm. you know, that was cool. We sold a lot of it, but everyone was like, where's the one with all of it? <laughs> where's the 12 issues all together? This is it. This is $125. It is a hardcover. It's all 12 issues of Jeff Johns and Gary Frank's Dooms Doomsday Clock, which of course was Dr. Manhattan was rewriting the DC universe. Really cool to see the Watchmen characters interact in the DC mm -hmm. universe. 
Um, so this is the whole thing, 125 bucks. It also has dozens of pages of behind the scenes stuff that you didn't get in the original releases of it. Next up is the paperback version of Batman White Knight Presents Harley Quinn for $17.99. This was a great, uh, uh, kind of our first outside of the main White Knight universe story. This time focusing on Harley Quinn, which I hope we get way more of these. I love that universe. And this collects issues one through six, as well as a bonus story that was only in the Harley Quinn Black, White, and Red series mm. that was not released in single issues, only released digitally and in a collected edition, but it's in this continuity in this universe, so it's collected in this as well. All right, so this is Milestone Comics Compendium Ooh. number one. This is pretty important because this collects some of the old Milestone comics that have never been collected. Wow. So you could possibly find them out in the wild individually, but they've never collected some of this until now. This is going to be $59.99. They're saying volume one, so it sounds like they're going to have another volume, but this has a lot in it. Let me read off what's in here for $59.99. You get Blood Syndicate 1 through 12, Hardware 1 through 12, Icon 1 through 10, Static number one through eight, Zombie zero through 11, and there was this Shadow Cabinet zero one shot all of that in this compendium as i said some of it never collected together before for 59.99 that's a really good deal for that many books yeah that's a lot of books next up is the volume one for six sidekicks of trigger keaton i know jenny who works here loves this series about a murdered uh old-timey actor who yeah. was actually a jerk but all the people who played his sidekicks through all his different movies team up together to figure out who murdered him and uh, this is the volume one of that for $16.99 okay so this is cocaine coast <laughs> this is a graphic novel for $19.99 and it's all about cocaine runners and in Europe. It's how they got cocaine into Europe. There was this hmm. connection between Colombia and this little sleepy town in Spain. This is real. This is this is not a um, hmm. a made up fictional story. This is this is a graphic novel telling it in sort of documentary style. There is a documentary about this on Netflix right now that's pretty popular. And so they decided to maybe some of it was even storyboarded for I'm, yeah. I'm not exactly sure. But that's what this is for nineteen ninety nine. Sounds like a Pretty interesting yeah. real-life crime tale. And this, on the complete other side of the last one, this is a difficult thing, the importance of admitting mistakes. This is a, a series of books, a difficult thing that is uh, wordless, two-tone comics for all ages to teach lessons about things, the importance of saying sorry, and all of that, I looked through a few pages, and it's really cute and great for all ages and makes a great gift, even though it'll be after Christmas, but it would be a great birthday gift or Valentine's Day gift. So that, I know I know some adults that could use this book. Yes, they <laughs> maybe hand it to somebody and just give them a, a stink eye and walk off. Yeah, give it to your boss, the one who <laughs> never shows you appreciation, can never admit when they're wrong. So this is from a blaze, and the one I'm going over is about to be from a blaze as well. It seems like they're trying to do some sort of, like I, I don't know, it's not exactly self help, but you know, sort yeah. of better yourself books, and you know, you can tell this one is more for kids. But check out this next one. So this next one is called Monster Mind, dealing with anxiety and self doubt. Hmm. It is a hardcover book. It's 19.99, and so the the author of this, he. Um, he listed out when he wrote this all of his different anxieties and he gave them all names and personalities and drew them you can see them on here <laughs> i think it sounds pretty interesting yeah. and why did he do this he wanted to dissect these different fears he had so that he could better understand them and present them to readers to try to help other people with their own anxieties so i think it sounds very different nothing like i've ever heard before yeah uh, i like to read a lot of psychology 
um, articles and things of that sort. So this, this sort of appeals to me. So it's just nineteen ninety nine, and this feels like it's a little more adult than the last yeah. one that you did, but both from a blaze. So I, I see a new theme building from them mm -hmm. pretty interestingly. I like, I'm, I'm wondering who this uh, bird in a top hat is. What yeah, anxiety, what anxiety is. that one is. Like, maybe you're not fancy enough. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, not you're fancy a slob. Like this bird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that's it. That's our show for today. Wow, really lacking without Marvel. And Megan. And Megan, that's true. Yeah, Megan is with the Marvel. The two M's that are missing today. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, even though it's a small week, you know we got to tell you the good comics. Yeah. I mean, when there's a new Stray Dogs launcher, and mm -hmm. that's, that's something. And a lot of these other ones look really cool, too. Um, this show's important also in that we let you know about variants. Like I said, most people are on the A cover. They need to know about these B covers yeah. that they might miss out on anyway. So uh, we hope that you enjoyed our show. We'll be back next week with Megan. In between now and then, Andy will do. Andy and I will be doing our Tuesday. <laughs> You're leaving me too. It's just me. Andy all by himself. No, both of us will be doing our Tuesday day early comic review show. So thanks for watching. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We keep gaining our numbers. I looked the other day, and we were up to one, two, three, four subscribers and it just made me feel good it's one two three four i would like to get to five six seven eight yeah help so us th get there. there you go come on let's let's make it happen so thank you and we will see you on our next show